Hello, my name is Diane Holton, and I'm so glad to have the opportunity to chat with you about mentoring. Mentoring is a time-proven strategy that can help individuals achieve their potential. As we live lengthier, healthier lives, we're working longer because we want to or need to. Because of this, employers and people of all ages are taking the opportunity to reimagine what it means to earn and learn over a lifetime. Companies are taking conventional mentoring methods, once primarily found in nonprofits, community, and faith-based organizations, into the workplace and leveraging their staff's strengths, perspectives, and range of experience to promote, retain, and build a stronger work culture. The benefits of mentoring are astounding. Mentors often report that their mentoring experiences improve their lives in tangible ways. Not only do they have a more positive outlook and are more empathetic, but they also find that mentoring teaches them more about themselves. Mentoring increases their sense of responsibility and accomplishment and lays the foundation for better morale at work and better relationships with family, friends, and coworkers. In fact, many mentoring participants state that they've become a better person, stronger leader, developed more patience, felt more effective, and acquired new skills. In this session, I'll define what a mentor is, discuss roles, share some case studies, benefits, advantages, and give you a few tips for starting your own mentoring program. But before I do so, I'd like to introduce myself and give a little more context behind the voice you're listening to. I come from a family of mentors, and by that I mean a military family. Retired Army Colonel Walter, Deborah, and little big brother Airman William Holton. All of them either directly or indirectly, and in various capacities mentored soldiers, their wives, and airmen. In a career like theirs, communication is very key, along with an understanding of how to navigate the chain of command. Looking back, I now realize that some of the conversations that were taking place when I come by their offices were in fact mentoring sessions. I graduated from my parents' alma mater, HBCU Florida A&M University located in Tallahassee, Florida. Even though it yields some impressive alumni like Slack's Christy Tillman and film producer William Packer, worldwide, Florida A&M University is known for their Marching 100. And fun fact, if you've watched the Super Bowl with Prince as the halftime act, the Marching 100 backed them up. I also studied fashion marketing at Parsons during the time Project Runway featured Tim Gunn. Sadly, I never applied to be on. Presently, I work at AARP as the Senior Deputy Art Director in the Media Division. My focus is cover stories, features, and some pop culture for AARP the magazine's 38 million readers. My newest venture has included overseeing the creative for two new, new digital verticals, TheGirlfriend.com for Gen X women and Sisters Letter for African American women. Almost everyone these days has a side hustle or something they are passionate about outside of their main gig. Mine include designing footwear, exploring new printing innovations, and installing store displays. Lastly, I'm heavily involved with AIGA, the Professional Association for Design. As my local chapter's strategic initiatives director, I am directly involved with the initiatives shared above, along with one or two at the national level. My specific involvement with various programming under education is what led me to delving into the mentoring space. In a few minutes, I'll introduce you to two AIGA DC mentoring programs that I launched that have been ongoing for about 10 years and that touch two different audiences. But first, what is mentoring? An intentional and supportive learning relationship between two or more people. What is a mentor? A caring individual who shares their knowledge, professional experience, and insights. Please note, it's not your mother, father, sibling, spouse, girlfriend, or boyfriend. I think it's helpful when starting a mentorship for people to understand everyone's role. So for a mentor, they would play a coach or advisor. They are to give advice and guidance, share ideas, and provide feedback. They share information on unwritten rules for success within an environment or organization. They are a source of encouragement and support, acting as a sounding board for ideas and concerns about school and career choices. They also provide insights into possible opportunities. 
In the resource role, a mentor identifies resources to help their mentee enhance personal development and career growth while also helping to expand a mentee's network of contacts. As a champion, they serve as an advocate for their mentees whenever the opportunity presents itself. They also seek opportunities for increasing their mentees' visibility. And when appropriate, they play devil's advocate to help mentees think through important decisions and strategies. What is a mentee? An individual who is willingly and ready to benefit from an exchange that develops his or her skills, confidence, and abilities, and seeks to enrich their professional journey. Mentees can be various ages, any profession, and located anywhere, in the same office or on the other side of the world. Like mentors, mentees have several roles they play. For starters, they are the driver of the relationship. They identify and communicate to their mentor the skills, knowledge, and or goals that they want to achieve. They bring up new topics that are important to them at any point and give feedback to their mentor. Mentees are the development planner. They maintain a mentoring plan and work with their mentor to set up goals, development activities, and timeframes. They serve as the teacher, looking for opportunities to give back to their mentors, often sharing information that they think might be valuable. And just as a mentor, mentees are a resource partner. They work with their mentor to seek resources for learning. They identify people and information that might be helpful. And lastly, mentees are continuous learners. They take full advantage of this opportunity to learn. While working on a mentoring initiative a couple of years ago, Shine mentor Beth had this to say about mentorship, which goes back to the mentee's role as a teacher. I like it when they mentor me too. We all think mentoring is about networking up, but it's also about networking down as well. Most of her mentor cohorts then and now couldn't agree more. For those that are interested in starting a mentoring program within their workplace, I suggest partnering with your human resources department to put together a plan for designing, managing, operating, and evaluating your new program. I researched some tips that might help both you and them get started. This is the first and the key element in building your program because the design is the blueprint you will follow to carry out all aspects of the program. Think about how staff can go about signing up to participate, whether or not it's part of a development plan, the focus or goal of the mentoring relationship, determine where the mentoring sessions will occur, determine how often mentors and mentees will meet and the desired length of the mentoring matches, determine desired outcomes, plan how the program will be evaluated, and develop policies and procedures to support the program. Ensuring that your mentoring program is well-managed is crucial. A well-managed program promotes accuracy and efficiency, establishes credibility, and enables you to gauge progress effectively and identifies areas that need improvement. The size of your staff will depend on the size and scope of your program. At the very least, you will need a program coordinator. So choose someone with strong leadership abilities and management skills who can manage a wide range of responsibilities that include managing the overall program, overseeing development and implementation of all promotional and educational efforts, recruiting and supervising teams, matching mentor pairs, developing and maintaining all records, policies, and procedures, coordinating mentoring activities, developing a plan to recognize program participants, developing a plan to evaluate the program, including soliciting participant feedback, tracking program statistics, which include budgetary costs, hours, and so forth, and documenting development of the mentor program. In addition to selecting a management team, you will need to establish policies and procedures that will reflect your program's decisions and practices that everyone will follow. Here are some areas to consider. Where and when mentoring takes place, how mentors and mentees are matched, whom a mentor or mentee should contact when problems arise, how to handle complaints, how to resolve problems in relationships or bring relationships to closure, and lastly, how to evaluate your success. 
Establish a financial plan and budget. Record expenditures accurately and develop a system for documenting the actual cost of running your program. Accurate records will help you estimate costs for future budgets. Areas to track could be training materials, for instance, folders, pens, notebooks, career development expenses, like off-site events to uh, maybe career enhancing activities such as a talk, a lecture, workshop, or skill sharing event, and special events such as a recognition award event. The day-to-day -day operating procedures you establish for your mentoring program will greatly affect your program's quality and sustainability. Strive for consistency, compatibility, support, and accountability. From mentor recruitment to mentor matching, from orientation to relationship closure, make sure all participants clearly understand what your program expects of them and what they can expect from your program in terms of training and support. Frequent and honest communication between staff and participants is key. Here are some areas to focus on. Recruitment. Recruiting mentors for your mentoring program should be driven by quality over quantity. Your mentor recruitment plan should focus on how well each prospective mentor can relate to the mentees in your program and fit in with your program's goals, structure, and general culture. Screening. I suggest having all applicants apply via written or online form. Please note, some people don't make good mentors, so screen out those who exhibit the following characteristics. Don't have enough time to commit to being consistent in their mentoring, seem to be volunteering for status or job promotion reasons, hold rigid opinions and don't seem open to new ideas, seem too concerned about what a mentee can do for them, want to um, be a mentor so they can work out problems from their own past. If a potential mentor exhibits any of these traits, it is best not to accept them. You may want to offer the staffer a different opportunity, perhaps be prepared with a list of options. Orienting and training. Establish a schedule that includes an orientation and possible training for mentors and mentees. Provide an overview of the program, clarify roles, responsibilities, expectations, time commitment, etc. You can use this opportunity to handle administrative matters such as having prospective mentors and mentees fill out program forms. Allow enough time for questions and answers at the end of the orientation. Your prospective mentors and mentees should clearly understand the goals of your mentoring program. One of the opportunities I'd like for my own um, community-based programs to adopt is mentor training. Having a session or two, I believe, would aid in the success in the program, as mentors often play a number of roles. This also could be applicable to mentees. Matching. Make sure they are committed to the conditions of the match and the mentoring relationship. Some mentoring programs take these areas of compatibility into consideration, temperament, life experiences, gender, and or race. While some programs allow people to choose their own mentors, self-selection can help relationships form more naturally on the basis of mutual interests. But the flip side is that this may mean a mentor's preference might be discarded. It's possible that both parties who do not get their first choice may be disappointed. Kickoff. Arrange a kickoff for the participants to meet in person. Provide ongoing support, supervision, and monitoring of mentoring relationships. Successful mentoring relationships do not just happen. Although most mentoring pairs will derive enough pleasure from the experience to keep them going, some reach an impasse that makes them begin to doubt their willingness to continue. That's why providing ongoing support and supervision is important. Bring mentors together to share ideas and support. Establish a process to manage grievances, resolve issues, and offer positive feedback. Assist mentors and mentees whose relationship is not working out. Recognize the contributions of all program participants. Providing recognition for significant contributions and accomplishments is an important component of a healthy, safe, and rewarding mentoring environment. Both public and private recognition for a job well done boosts morale, fosters company spirit, and raises retention rates across the board. Actively solicit feedback from mentors and mentees regarding their experiences. Use information to refine the program and retain mentors. Mentors and mentees need to feel that they are part of your organization and that their feedback is valuable. If they submit feedback, be sure to acknowledge it, and if appropriate, use it to improve your program. Conduct private, confidential interviews with mentors and mentees. Have mentees and mentors meet with staff and with each other. Listen to and support both as they sort out what happened in the relationship and what, if anything, went wrong, and help them remember the good aspects of the relationship and the positive things they did. This can also be conducted via a digital platform. 
Think about how you intend to evaluate your program's effectiveness, including the type of data you'll collect and how you will collect it and from which sources. The ultimate success of your program depends on how well you are able to assess its effectiveness, address any weaknesses, and demonstrate that it is meeting established goals and objectives. With a comprehensive evaluation process in place, you can do the following. Provide objective feedback to program staff and participants about whether they're meeting their goals. Identify achievements and milestones that warrant praise and increase motivation. Pinpoint problems early enough to correct them. Build credibility with your organization that your program is vital and des deserves support. And finally, quantify experiences so that your program can help others. Now let's take a look at two of the programs that I helped launch. Though they may have been created specifically for the DC creative community, there is no reason it can't be adapted for a workplace environment. AIJ DC's peer-to-peer -peer mentoring program called Shine. Created in 2011, this program seeks to fertilize the career growth and professional success of emerging designers. The participants are mentors who work in the design interactive or web space. They have five plus years of experience while the mentees are only asked to have about one to four years of experience. Each year we kick off the program in a space where the mentor and mentee meet for the first time. At this venue, they work together to identify the mentee's career goals and aspirations. They also loosely compose a schedule for when and where they are going to meet and the preferred time for both of them. Right around the two and a half mark, they are invited to participate in a program where both can get some professional development training, i.e. resume building, tips on becoming a freelancer, or how to better negotiate. Then at the end of the four months, um, all the teams are brought together to share what they've learned, consumed, um, and you know worked on as a respective pairs. Some of the best relationships can come out of a program like this. And one in particular that I love mentioning is that of Liz Rose and Chelsea. Liz Rose on the left is a designer that came to DC not knowing much about the city. She was paired with junior designer Chelsea, who happened to be a screen printer. The goal with these two was for Liz Rose to provide advisement and guidance to Chelsea and for Chelsea to teach Liz Rose screen printing. Together they visited different bars, redesigning their logos, and then printing them onto coasters, which you can see. This relationship empowered Chelsea to then um, participate a couple of years later as a mentor to Jamie. Together, they worked on a, a work-life balance survey before screen printing and distributed to that season's cohorts. And to further amplify relationships, all of them have stayed, to, stayed involved within the AIGA community. Liz Rose and Chelsea serving on the Design Continuum Scholarship Committee and Jamie volunteering to pay it forward as a mentor and program volunteer. Another shy mentor who paid it forward got his thanks via mail a little while after he invested four months into his mentee, Ashley. He shared it with me with a note that said, this is one of the reasons why I participate in programs like Shine. And it reads, it's official. I'm an interactive designer at a creative agency. It's crazy to think about given how long I've been working towards this. I could have never gotten to this point without the Shine program, but more specifically without you. Your honest and unwavering support is what got me this job, and try as I may, I'll never be able to repay you, but I guess I can try. Use this for future coffee meetings with your new mentees. A motivator like you deserves all the caffeine your heart desires. The next mentoring case study that I'd like to share is one that is centered around group mentoring. Everyone has a unique story and path, and so I felt it was um, important for high school students to know this. They don't always get the support from family and friends as it relates to the arts. So bringing in a speaker who may have had an unconventional path to their career can be encouraging and impactful. The mission of this type of mentoring is designed to expose graphic design and photography high school students to the plethora of creatives through none other than actual local creatives. Every month, and usually in the morning hours, different creatives um, are brought in to talk with, diff with two different classes. The subjects have included broadcast design, typography, lettering, lighting design, etc. And as a bonus in the spring, we work with the school to do a field trip to an agency to further engage the students um, with professionals in the wild. The results are always positive. The students learn, the teachers learn, and the guest creatives have an opportunity to not only hone their presentation skills because kids are honest and occasionally too blunt, but give back to the community in a different way. 
one student that participated in the Mentoring Speaker Series and for whom I'm incredibly thrilled to see how he's grown as a creative is Nick Fulcher. I'm so proud to see him score his first Grammy as art director of Cardi B's album, but also to be honored as one of Adweek's top 100 creatives. So just when you think mentees aren't listening, they are. They are absorbing just about everything and everyone in front of them. Mentoring is a symbiotic relationship that I can get out as much as my mentee. The design industry can feel extremely overwhelming and it moves so fast that it can be discouraging, but it doesn't have to be. 70% of Fortune 500 companies and private companies use mentoring in their organizations to ensure that learning is happening within their organization. Mentoring directly affects an individual's ability to succeed as a leader. 66% of organizations found that mentoring within their orgs created new leaders and fostered new career development. In fact, according to an AARP research study, younger workers are more likely to have been fortunate enough to benefit from a mentoring relationship in the workplace than those 45 and older. Nearly 6 in 10 18 to 29 year olds and 30 to 44 year olds have had mentors versus just 44% of those 60 and older. The survey also showed that mentorship can enhance recipients' soft skills and career-related knowledge in addition to the actual skills that get a job done. Job skills or training advice top the list of the most valuable aspects of mentorship, followed by advice on career paths, networking opportunities, new job opportunities, and advice on difficult workplace situations. Now let's look at types of mentoring. Informal mentoring is usually voluntary, loosely structured and flexible, and the mentor may have one or more roles in the relationship with the mentee. Formal mentoring is similar to the SHINE program I shared earlier. They are short, isolated episodes and are often casual. The mentor is responsive to the current needs of the mentee and their present situation. Sometimes contracts are implemented and can be part of a development plan. Non-traditional mentoring is not something that I'm 100% familiar with, however, I know that it exists. That said, I've read that some companies use SAASE, cloud-based packages, apps, and plugins and extensions. This is helpful for those who can't or aren't able to have an in-person mentor. This service is often offered to small companies that are agile as the customizable tool enhances rather than dilutes the organization's brand. Um, and you can also run customizable functions across multiple platforms and generate meaningful analytics that allow for improvements and changes. Here are a few companies and organizations that might serve as a resource for you and others looking to get involved with mentoring. In the last two years, a few social media brands started to embrace the initiative. According to VentureBeat, within LinkedIn's dashboard, members can access the Career Advice Hub. From there, they can input preferences about the advice they'd like to dispel or receive, and LinkedIn will make recommendations based on that input and what the service already knows about its users. After a match is made, the conversations can take place directly within LinkedIn's messaging service. Facebook has taken to matching people 18 and older within groups to help them guide each other for free. From what I read on TechCrunch.com, their goal is to help provide guidance to people in need or for educational purposes rather than straight career coaching. Facebook mentorship product manager Gabrielle Colon um, stated that group admins decide whether they would like to enable mentorships within their communities. However, it is up to them to pair together and make the introductions. She goes on to say, if we are looking for job searches outside of immediate networks, mentors can really help. Out in Tech strives to unite the LGBTQ tech community through various outreach programs. Through their mentorship program, they empower and encourage diversity in the tech world, pairing young adults with like-minded professionals working in tech sectors. Similar to the program I launched for professionals and emerging designers, Out in Tech mentees learn firsthand the hard and soft skills needed for launching a successful career. The program is eight weeks long, and according to my colleague who's a mentor, she's found it very enriching. Out in Tech's program is available to those who are remote anywhere in the United States, though if in New York, participants can select the in-person option. For UX design and product design, 
Everyone will tell you there is no single path, says UX designer David Simpson. To help the next generation fill the plethora of tech jobs that are increasingly popping up, he created the platform design.org. Mentees and mentors can join the 2,000 plus people who've signed up for the site for free. On top of its global mentoring network, the online platform is planning on offering additional resources such as a list of design events and catalog of design podcasts. Let's move on to mentoring advantages. I have a few I'd like to highlight. Improved career outcomes. Compared to non-mentored employees, mentored employees receive higher compensation, receive a greater number of promotions, feel more satisfied with their career, feel more committed to their career, are more likely to believe that they will advance in their career. A mentoring program guides employees over the hurdles and helps them achieve in a way that's aligned with the company's mission as well as their own. Mentoring has found to reduce turnover and retain staff. In a study of 1,300 U.S. Army officers, being part of a mentoring relationship was found to decrease odds of turnover by 38%. Compared to non-mentored employees, mentored employees felt more positively about their organization as a place to work for, felt more positively about their organization's senior leadership, believed their organization provided opportunities for career growth, and felt informed about the future course of their organization. In some research I further compiled, I read that millennials planning to stay with their employer for more than five years are twice as likely to have a mentor, roughly 68% than not. How does one find a mentor? When looking for one, look up, but also to your left and right. Your peers could also be the ones to guide you and then potentially hire you. Your mentor may find you. I love this quote by the Curlbox founder that says, people think that mentors come with angel wings and fall from the heavens. I'm your mentor. It's usually not like that. It's usually someone who helps you in a certain aspect of your life and grooms you. Don't always look for someone who looks like you. By following this tip, you're bound to learn something new and potentially advance your end game. This mentor's perspective could likely enhance your business, gain new business, and or assist with troubleshooting potential problem areas. Be flexible. Meet people where they are and where you're trying to go. This sounds simple, but I have to say it. For example, if the person you're trying to connect with um, works in the evening, they may not be up for meeting for coffee in the morning. Or if you're trying to meet with someone cyberly, be open and considerate of the time zones. Check where they are and make yourself available when it's convenient for them. Personally, when I meet someone that I want to be my mentor, I want to sit with them and soak up as many stories from their lives as I can. There is this richness in hearing their experiences that trumps any kind of smarts. When assessing a mentor, here are some characteristics to look for. Someone experienced. A good mentor should have a large amount of real-world experience in the same field or area the mentee is seeking to learn. For instance, a lot of people claim to be entrepreneurs and are more than willing to be mentors, but they have never really experienced the life cycle of starting a business. Trustworthy. A great mentor is someone you can trust implicitly. You should never have to question whether or not your mentor has your back. They should not only support you when everything is going well, but also stick with you and help you through any tough times. A mentor should also be authentic. Someone who's willing to talk about their failures of which we and they've learned from. It's a humbling experience to hear people talk about that. Supportive. The best mentors make introductions to other people. I've had mentors not only invite me to creative events, but also make me work some networking events to help grow and get established. By introducing me to um, my network, I had a mentor who demonstrated that he believed in me and was willing to put his name on the line to support me. I do the same thing for my mentees, from various types of design events and groups to general artists-related dinners and conferences. A good mentor is your biggest cheerleader. While they should challenge you to be your very best self, a mentor should make it a priority to celebrate your wins, um, confident, and be supportive. Has integrity. Look for a mentor with a similar set of morals and values. If your mentor's personal beliefs contradict with what you stand for, this could be problematic. Do some background research on any potential mentor to make sure they have an outstanding reputation in their industry without a history of questionable decision making or a pattern of fallouts with various deals or employers. Low integrity mentors are very likely to fumble 
when you ask them to assist you with goals. You don't want to work with someone who may reflect poorly on your reputation. Your association with someone who is not well respected in their industry could burn bridges for you before you even have a chance to prove yourself. Avoid working with a mentor who lacks sincerity because you may end up suffering from their mistakes. Responsible. The ability to listen and respond in a meaningful way is an important quality in a mentor. Some people like to hear themselves talk more than they like to listen, and those people wouldn't make good mentors. A mentor should be receptive, open to hearing your perspective, even if they don't agree with it, and be ready to step in with the appropriate response. A good mentor won't spoon feed you with things you want to hear. They'll provide you with things you need to hear. Sometimes the answer they give you won't necessarily be the one you've hoped to hear, but a great mentor will be focused on giving you the best insight for your long-term success. Transparent. A great mentor should never have a hidden agenda. You should not owe your mentor anything outside of being grateful and appreciative of their help. As the mentee, you are showing your respect for your mentor's wisdom and insight, and a great mentor will respect you equally. Please note that a mentor-mentee relationship can be mutually beneficial, but your relationship should never be contingent on your willingness to do favors for your mentor or perform unrelated tasks. Compassionate. A great mentor will possess empathy and emotional intelligence to uplift you on days when things are uncertain. Find someone who won't use your inexperience against you. And lastly, I can't underscore enough the honest characteristic. I have had a few mentors and none of them sugarcoat anything. They don't pull any punches and always give direct and actionable advice. There are many types of mentors. Here are three that I think are the most common. Business strategy. If you want to build a business that is sustainable, scalable, and constantly evolving, having this type of mentor might be advantageous. They would be good to bounce ideas off of, share advice, and offer guidance. Technical. With the assistance of this type of mentor, you will gain as it relates to the ever-growing world of technology. Don't look at this type of mentor as someone that you have to learn an entire new program with. There are classes for that. This might be someone who can give you guidance with tech as it relates to starting or maintaining your business, or as a designer understanding the vernacular that IT sometimes uses. Your relationship with your tech mentor can be long or short term. A business development mentor is great for breaking down how the industry works. They can help navigate the mindsets of those involved and the processes that should be followed. An example is understanding a sales or marketing department. Without those departments, you may not have a business. So working with a business development mentor would be beneficial. As I near the end of this session, I want to go over some simple rules of engagements for maintaining a mentor-mentee relationship. Ground rules and shared expectations need to be clear. Mentoring is a voluntary activity. No one should be obligated to participate. Mentoring is not top down. Young people with specific experience can mentor more senior people. Chemistry is key to the success of the relationship. Mutual comfort and respect are also important. Self-confident people learn from differences of style and opinion, even heated discussions. Participation does not include any promises of career advancement, protection, or special treatment. Either party should be able to sever a mentoring relationship for any reason, no explanations or justifications. Now I'm done. It's your turn to apply what you've just learned. So here are some resources um, that I wanted to just kind of share with you. It's some of the things that I talked about um, throughout this session. Uh, hopefully you'll make a note of them and we'll further um, research them yourselves um, to see what might work for you. Thank you for listening and please reach out should you have any questions or to share some mentoring testimonials. I'd love to hear from you.